My name's Neville Smith. I'm currently the Director of the Fisheries, Aquaculture and Marine Ecosystems Division, or simply known as FAME, here at SBC. And uh, we support members on fish and fisheries in the region and also aquaculture. There are three different sectors that we're really dealing with in fisheries in the Pacific and the crisis, the COVID crisis, is affecting each of those sectors differently. We have the tuna sector and the tuna fisheries, uh, large industrial fisheries, we have the coastal fisheries, tend to be much smaller scale and at a community level, and we also have aquaculture, which itself is split into food production related aquaculture for local consumption, but also um, a bit of high value aquaculture production for export. And the crisis is impacting each differently. In the tuna fishery, the main impacts are on people movement, uh, and in particular continuing the fishery, uh, and that's fairly important for the region because the tuna fishery is worth so much to the region and with tourism shut down it's really important that that money keeps flowing into the region. So the main impacts on the tuna fishery right now are things like fisheries observers not being able to travel to get onto fishing vessels but also the potential issues associated with transshipment in port and a lot of ports temporarily at least closing as part of the lockdown process. The impacts on the coastal fishery are different uh, in a lot of places, with the shutdown of tourism, we're seeing people move away from urban centres or moving away from those jobs back to community villages. Uh, so that's having a direct impact on people being more active in the subsistence fisheries. So that's the main impact in the coastal area at this time. And then in the aquaculture sector, some of the key issues also relate to people movements and transport, but also significantly increased in terms of demand for production for food security. So for instance with tuna I've mentioned that you know there's a big economic reliance in the region and in particular in the North, Northern Pacific membership of SBC on those fisheries, the so-called parties to the Nauru agreement countries. And so for them that economic flow is really important to their economies and as a result you know the key crisis impact would be a significant dent for instance in their gross domestic product. Uh, obviously you know, for them, the impacts there at the same time as tourism impacts would be really, really significant impacts on their economies. But they also have the people issues to be concerned about, the observers who I mentioned, they have families at home, and so there's that whole issue of making sure that those observers can be repatriated appropriately. So they're having to go through those processes as well, at the same time as trying to find ways to actually keep that fishery operating. Uh, in terms of the coastal sector, what do those risks mean? With those extra people at home fishing, in a general sense, there's increased pressure on those fisheries. So resources that were already under considerable pressure are now going to be under further pressure. And that has a short term consequence, obviously, in terms of availability of catch to eat. But in the longer term, it means that our challenges around ensuring those fisheries are sustainable are all the greater. In the aquaculture sector, some of the immediate impacts and potential issues are, for instance, the supply of feed for the aquaculture sector. So how do we ensure that uh, feed for tilapia production continues to flow into the places it needs to flow into in the region? A consequence of the risks associated with the coastal fishery and the aquaculture sector is if we see some of those pressures come through with respect to a reduction in availability of coastal fish and a decline in the production from the aquaculture sector, collectively those could contribute to exacerbating any humanitarian crisis in the region with respect to access to food supplies. So that's why they are of particular concern to us together. So in the tuna sector, what SPC is doing in terms of support is continuing to provide advice to FFA, the Forum Fisheries Agency, who work on the management of the tuna fishery, and SPC provides the science and technical advice to them. We're in very regular online meetings with our colleagues at FFA and with their membership across the Pacific, and that's an integral piece of work that continues to happen at a fast pace. We're also in the midst of preparing for the annual 2020 tuna fish stock assessments. 
on data from 2019 and that work can actually continue remotely. It's mostly desktop science so the teams are continuing to work on those assessments as we speak and those assessments we're pretty certain will still be delivered on time as they would have been in a year without the COVID crisis. So we're continuing that direct support for members on the tuna fishery. In the coastal fisheries, what we're doing is we're focusing on replanning work and rescheduling work for later in the year, but also trying to reinvent how we do certain work. What training can we deliver online that we previously might have been able to or had to deliver in country? But also, what are some of the other tasks that we can actually complete right now? Uh, for instance, updating manuals on how to um, utilise FADs in nearshore fisheries. Some of those tasks can actually be done right now. In the aquaculture sector, we're actively working with countries to make sure that we actually can continue to have feed coming into the region, but also that in country, that feed can continue to move, say in the Fiji context, from areas outside the lockdown to areas inside the lockdown, while still maintaining human biosecurity as is entirely appropriate with COVID-19. In terms of uh, keeping FAME working so that we can keep delivering results for members, one of the key things for us has been communication. Obviously, we've used online communication tools previously, but we've had to really change and adapt our use of online tools, and in particular, the frequency of our online meetings. That's obviously creating some challenges from staff in terms of fatigue with too many meetings, but also potentially with uh, too much time staring at screens as opposed to the normal get up and go and have a chat with someone at some point during the day. So the team have had to get quite inventive and uh, focus quite hard on that transition from mostly working in the office and seeing people day to day or working in the field with people day to day to working online. That's taken quite a bit of energy and so an important part of the role of the FAME leadership team has been to make sure people's energy levels stay up, they stay motivated and they stay focused on the work so that we can continue to deliver services to members.